Hey there, my name is Zappy, and welcome to my channel. Wow, it's been a while since I said that. Today, I'm here to give you 40 dumb facts from the Drizzle Season 2023 announcement. I don't exactly have much to say, so without further ado, let's begin. Right away, we get introduced to a brand new stage called Crab Leg Capital, which at first I thought it was Moray Towers. Maybe one day. In case it wasn't obvious already, the stage is set on top of a skyscraper with other tall buildings and construction cranes in the background. With the new season comes brand new music, with us getting a peek of Rip, Stop, and Go by H2O. Freaking love that name. It's easy to miss, but this octoling is wearing the Squidvader cap backwards thanks to a brand new feature. I'll add more to this later. To celebrate the release of the new season, a big run is happening on Saturday, the 2nd of September to the 4th, set in Umami Ruins, with the prize being the Grizzco Chopper. Does that mean there's no new King Salmonid? A special Splatfest is being held a week after, and on top of that, it's an idle Splatfest. It is time for Fry, Shiver, and Big Man to duke it all out. Amiibo hunters are eating good because the Deep Cut Amiibo is officially releasing this November, separately and bundled. We see this Octoling wearing a brand new studio headset that's more rectangular and dynamic. As Crab Leg Capital is being shown off, we see the orange team consisting of the new Blah Blah Bar Deco, Octobrush Nouveau, maybe one of those guys are the culprit for the sprinkler over there. A curling bomb has been thrown out, and I think it's from the new Heavy Edit Splatling. Gonna have to confirm this in post. A brand new slasher weapon has been revealed, called the Dread Ringer based on the mop buckets with ringers. When you shoot, it seems to fire twice in one swing, and might be a three hit. Either way, it looks more of like a burst weapon. Unlike the previous seasons, we're getting two brand new stages, the second one being Shipshake Cargo Company. While it's set on a ship, the area around it might be relevant to either Alterna or something else. We see a cute little jelly eating some spicy ramen. It may be a reference to the Sam Yang Bulldog Fire Noodles. Here we have a shot consisting of a brand new tri slasher and the Gold Dynamo Roller in the distance. Speaking of Gold Dynamo, this weapon was revealed all the way back when Splatoon 3 was revealed in a February 20th. 2021 Nintendo Direct. It wouldn't be a shocker if no one ends up using it because of it having a bad kit after all this time. The same octoling with the headphones and those banger kicks is showing us a brand new splatling weapon, the heavy edit splatling, which to me looks like a giga chatted ballpoint. What's special about this weapon is the fire rate. It takes almost two seconds for it to be fully charged and it's either a four or five tap. Remember fact four, when I mentioned the backwards Squid Vader cap? If you go into your player customization, you can now press the Y button to adjust gear. I think the trailer confirms that this is only limited to hats and no other headgear, which is a shame. Also, I was right at fact 10. The heavy edit spotling is confirmed to have curling bomb and tacticooler. You see this small little icon? That's supposed to tell you that the gear it's on is able to be adjusted. At first, I didn't understand the point of these photos. However, after taking a closer look, it seems like not only are the hats adjusted, but also the clothing. You can tell that it's larger than the normal versions. By the way, where's the catalog? Isn't that what the seasons are supposed to have? For players to keep playing their game? Where is it? Anyway, Salmonid Smokeyard returns as a Salmon Run map. Not Lost Outpost. Not Ruins of Arc Polaris this piece of shit. But as a compensation, there's new work suits, two of which show off a cool camouflage pattern. One of them is traditional, and one that kind of reminds me of a koi fish. I don't know who came up with this, but wow, I hate this design. It's a polka dot design with blue and yellow colors, pink gloves, headset, and boots. New table turf cards were shown off, based on the new weapons and kits we'll be getting. Custom Goo Tuber, Sloshing Machine Neo, Gold Dynamo Roller, Octobrush Nouveau, Dry Stringer Whatever, Blah Blah Bar Deco, Sorella Brella, and Ball Point Splatling Nouveau. We also got two King Salmonid cards, Kahozuna and Horoboros. But because there's no confirmation of a third boss, maybe it's safe to assume that there won't be a new King Salmonid this season. New challenges are coming as well. Ink Jets for everyone, Swim It to Win It, and Modded Rainmaker Test Fire. Two of these challenges seem focused on spot zones, and of course the Modded Rainmaker challenge is on... Rainmaker. We do know that Mako Mart will be one of the Inkjet challenge stages, and Hammerhead will be one of the Swim It challenge stages. For those confused about Swim It to win it, this is all about speed, and imagine you have all pure swim speed gear just all ready to go. This challenge was accidentally leaked by Nintendo themselves when they mentioned Sheldon's modified Rainmaker on Twitter. The post was later deleted, and confirms that this was not meant to be tweeted so soon. It would have been cool to see the Rainmaker shoot at giant twisters of ink like in Splatoon 1 instead of it just being a triple shot. Ink 
Inkblot is confirmed to be one of the challenges stages. Not gonna bother guessing what the other one would be. They now show us Crab Leg Capital in the dark when there's a Splatfest event happening. Jelly's riding paragliders. Fireworks going off. You can even see Hagglefish Market in the background. The drizzle season is coming September 1st, 2023 with the tagline saying not to be missed, which I think is pretty cool. Keep an eye on Twitter, or X if you will, for more posts talking about what's coming next season.